Hi everyone and welcome to Murphy's Law Garage. Today we fix my daily beater that tried to kill me on the way to work today. It's gonna be fun. Dang it. So you might ask yourself, JB, what do you mean by your daily beater trying to kill you? Let's start off with what the daily beater is. Meet my 1999 Toyota Corolla 5-speed 4-door. Um, infamously, these cars are known for never dying. Ever, 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 ever. It doesn't mean that they don't come with their problems. This car has round about 250,000 miles on it. I drive it like I stole it and am being chased by the cops every single inch of its life. And from time to time, things are going to break when you drive a car like that. But this one is a little bit interesting. When you try to stop, well, this happens. All right, let me see if I can show you all what this silly thing's doing without killing myself. We're doing, ah, uh, 55. One wheel, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Smoking it up back there. All right, let's see if I can get the brakes to outright fail like they had been from time to time. Nope, lock up. Nope, lock up. Let's grab a gear here. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, they, they decided to come back for that one. <laughs> it's that right front wheel is all we got. Like, it's all she wrote. Watch, watch this, watch this, you ready? Watch this. <laughs> That's horrible. All right, y'all. Uh, let me get back to the house and get this fixed and stop trying to shift and hold the camera at the same time. That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of hard to convey just how sketchy it is when just this wheel wants to stop the entire vehicle. But it wasn't always quite that way leading up to this. The reason why I believe the master cylinder is failing is because it started off as just weak brakes. You put your foot on the pedal, the pedal is nice and soft, it goes down almost all the way to the floor and wants to bite at the bottom. Like, ah, maybe I need to change the fluid, you know, master cylinder is getting a little weak, it'll be all right. A week goes by, I go to hit the brakes and pedal nearly to floor, only right wheel wants to grab. And of course that day it just happened to have been wet. So braking was catacombed to buttering a ice skating rink and trying to walk across it barefoot. Yeah, pretty fun. Last night, and I'll let that slide for another day or two. Last night on the way home from my buddy's house, I go to pull into my driveway doing about you know, 15, 20 mile an hour, put my foot on the floor, the pedal goes all the way down, just nothing. So diagnostically speaking, we have a brake pedal that is easy to apply. It doesn't require a bunch of extra force, but we have intermittent brakes. They do work sometimes, they don't work other times, but basically all braking with the front right when it does. Um, the brake calipers aren't stuck, they're not dragging. If you had a a plugged or collapsed brake line or a bad caliper most likely it's going to you're going to have a little bit of a different symptom where the caliper is going to receive pressure and it stays pressurized um, you would have a caliper that's dragging you know you let go in this case the, the, you put the clutch in the car slows down very quickly drags to one side um, if it were the brake booster you would have increased pedal effort because that's the booster's only job you still have a mechanical connection to the 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 uh, master cylinder so whenever you would push the brakes it would take effort to stop the car you know pushing hard on the pedal but the car would still stop in this case we are randomly losing brake pressure altogether and the car doesn't want to stop uh, what's interesting to me though is that it would choose to pressurize the wheel that's furthest away from the master cylinder, which is over here in the front. Um, I can't quite wrap my mind around that one, other than it being possible that the way that the master cylinder is designed, because there's one line that directly leaves it going to this side and one that directly leaves it going to that side, that it's probably a two-throw 
a master cylinder and one of the plungers operates one side, one plunger operates the other side just to ensure safety that if one were to fail, the other one would work. That's the only thing I can really think what causes that. Though luckily this being a manual, uh, the third pedal gives you an added benefit of an extra way to brake the car if something were to go wrong with the brakes, you know, so today I even went to the parts shop to get the parts for it, basically rev matching and downshifting. You have the handbrake, of course, most manual cars have a real handbrake, and um, what little bit of the brakes that were there that were left. Let me show you the parts that we have. All right, so needed for this repair is some brake fluid. We got some of your most basic B uh, dot three auto zone brake fluid perfectly good we're going to need a lot of it so get a, a nice big bottle the stuff's cheap if you've got some 15 year old brake fluid in your shop that you're considering using just don't just I don't know <laughs> kill some weeds with it it brake fluid is too cheap it's also hygroscopic so if you leave it sitting around for too long water will get in here and it'll affect the boiling point of the fluid and make it less effective and actually hurt your uh, your brake system next for this 99 Corolla specifically, which does not have ABS, because it's, I mean, as base as possible, VE model, we have Duralast part number, part number NM52523. Get my receipt out the way. Here is the Brake Master. It has a reservoir on it, which is very nice. And like I was saying, what's interesting about this one is the fact that it actually uses two separate connections for the front and rear brakes. So uh, the front rear brakes and then left and right on the front. So I think that's why only one side wants to work. Um, and then what's cool about this, what I noticed when I got the box from AutoZone, is because you always want to bleed your, your master. And I'm going to show you how we do this. But they actually give you the parts that you need to do it. Now I have this stuff laying around, but basically, you take these tubes and you stick them in the lines where your brake connections go, you fill this full of fluid, and then you pump manually the master until the fluid circulates through it and back into the reservoir to force the air bubbles out of this. If you do not bench bleed a master cylinder, you're gonna have, before you put it on a car, you're gonna have a hell of a time getting this to work properly. So let's get this, uh, we'll get this unboxed in a second. We'll walk over here show you that this is what we're working with you can see it's in a nice open place on this car and I'm, I'm sure if you're watching this video you're probably working on the same one but if you can see here this connection on the front goes up over down to this T this line goes to the rear of the car for the drum brakes this one goes off to the driver front but look at this it's got a separate fitting that goes up runs across and feeds the passenger side. So I'm thinking this must be some sort of safety feature that uh, Toyota's engineers put in that, you know, keeps you from killing yourself if it goes wrong. All right, so simple enough. I've got the cap and the strainer taken out of the reservoir. The hoses come with these barb fittings. There's some pretty, very easy to understand instructions here that come along with it. I've got the pointed end stuck into each one of these fittings. The hoses wrap around, they've got this little plastic bracket that you can use to help hold the hoses down all the way in the bottom of the reservoir. Now all we need to do is to fill this most of the way full of fluid. Just, you know, put it in a bench vise if it helps you out. Just make sure you're not spilling it everywhere because brake fluid is very, very bad for paint and skin and things. And right here we're going to push this in and out. Uh, I'm going to use an extension out of my tool set, but use something to push this uh, piston in and out until it stops blowing bubbles inside the reservoir. Once that's done, you're basically good to install it on the car. I would suggest leaving the tubes in the reservoir whenever you do this. Uh, and I'll bring you back whenever this is done being bench bled and I'll move on to removing the old one. And I've been bleeding it, for, I've been pumping it for a while here and you can see there's a pretty steady stream of bubbles working their way out of the master. So I suggest, you know, pumping the, the piston probably five to ten times a piece and then let it sit like this for a while and let those air bubbles find their way back to the surface. And just keep waiting. Let them, like see it stopped right here. Pump it again. Wait for it to stop. Pump it again. Wait for it to stop. Make sure your fluid never falls below the level of the hoses going in here. That if you've got them all the way at the bottom, you'll be all right. So let me finish pumping this until we stop getting air bubbles and we'll get the old one off. 
<clears throat> I will just leave this right here. Mm -hmm. All right, so the master is bench bled. Now we need to go ahead and get this thing taken apart. We've got one, two brake lines. We've got one down here, two, three nuts, one electrical connection. Once we get those off, we'll be able to wiggle this sucker out of here, slide it out the way. It's gonna make a bit of a mess with brake fluid. It's okay. Make sure to get you some paper towels to try to control the fluid when it comes out. It's, it's gonna make a mess and like I said, it'll hurt your paint. If you care about it, I uh, really don't care about the paint. But let's get this out of here and then we're gonna get the new one in and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna deal with trying to make sure there's no air in there so we don't have to bleed the whole system. Bring it right back. All right, so the new brake master is in. It was as simple as sliding the old one off and sliding the new one in. I've got the brake connections loosely tied in. Now, something to be said when you take these off, and if you're following along at home, these are 10 mils, 10 millimeter, the bolts that hold it to the uh, booster are 12 mil. When you're taking these brake lines off, it's super important to be careful not to strip these nuts. You will have a bad, bad time. So I would suggest taking your 10 mil and rotating in the tightening direction just a tiny little bit, like a 16th or 32nd until you hear a little bit of a pop or you get a little bit of movement and then turn around and go back the other direction. Definitely use flare nut wrenches if you have them available to you. I don't right now, I'm at home. Um, but the reason why you do that is if you do go the tightening direction and the nut wants to round a little bit, you won't be damaging the face of the nut that then allows you to loosen it back the other direction. And usually if you go to tightening direction, you almost always get a little bit of a pop and a movement and it'll freely loosen the other direction. Just don't go ham at it in the loosening direction and damage those nuts. Um, again, remember brake fluid is hygroscopic, so keep the reservoir sealed as much as possible. You also don't want trash going in there. When you run these nuts in, you want them to be tight, but you don't want them to be too tight. Um, something to be said, you know, if you're watching this video and you feel uncomfortable with what you've seen up to this point, and you feel like maybe there's too many holes in what I've explained to you, you probably shouldn't be attempting this just because they're bricks. It's very dangerous. You might want to bring it to a professional. You need to be decently comfortable with what you're doing here. But anyways, from this point on, it's pretty simple. I'm going to tighten these two nuts for the brake lines. I'm going to put the three bolts onto the, the master, and then I'm going to top this off with fluid, and then I'm going to show you how I plan to make sure bubbles don't make it down these lines and force us to have to bleed every single caliper in the vehicle. Be right back. All right, so once you've got the master connected, the challenge we have here is that now there's going to be an air bubble tracing it up to its highest point. There's going to be an air bubble sitting right here, and there's going to be an air bubble sitting right here with a dead zone of fluid in the whole tube. And if you were to press the brakes, the master is going to push fluid into that and try to drive that air bubble down. Now chances are when you release the pedal it would drive back and then come out the reservoir. But to make absolutely sure you don't accidentally force that bubble into let's say an ABS pump, this car doesn't have that, or into a T or something where it just can't get back out again, it could quickly make its way to this caliper right here. You're going to want a secret weapon. And that's this bad boy right here. This is like 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. It's a vacuum pump uh, for brake bleeding. It's useful for a billion different things. You can see here I have an old adapter that I made out of a, uh, a bathtub stopper here. See, I've got a tiny little hole in the middle of it. And then I've got a different one here that works perfectly for this. I've got this little coupler right here that fits right over the opening of the brake reservoir, like that. And I made a tiny little hole in it, force that tube into it, and then I connect it to the vacuum pump, and now I can draw a vacuum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw a vacuum and I'm going to leave it sit for a few minutes. Draw a vacuum, let it sit for a few minutes. I'm going to do that until I see absolutely no bubbles coming up inside of the master and then I'm going to pump the brakes. Bring it right back. All right. So I've got it connected. I'm going to draw it up to about 10 PSI or so. And you can see the way I've got it hose clamped down onto the top of the reservoir. 
And I'm going to watch this. Every time air finds its way into the system from the brakes, that pressure is going to drop a little bit. We want to see this pressure stabilize, though that might not be perfect because you might not be able to get a perfect seal right there on the top of the reservoir. It's okay. Ultimately, what we want to be sure of is that bubbles no longer bubble up inside this reservoir before we go pumping on the master cylinder and accidentally drive bubbles down into the system. Okay? Get you all one of these things. They're awesome. All right. I've even gone and bumped on these lines a few times, make sure no bubbles come out. It's been about 10 minutes. I'm pretty confident that we're holding pressure steady enough and that all the bubbles are out. I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna pull this whole contraption off and then we're gonna try the brakes out. All right, so I've got the brake reservoir up to just a tiny bit above max right here. I've got the cap back on, and this is kind of important, especially when you're talking about trying to make sure air bubbles don't find their way deeper. This cap actually helps this master cylinder form a vacuum. That vacuum is intentional to help draw bubbles back to the reservoir if they exist. So make sure to put your cap back on before you start this process. We're going to pump a few times and then make sure we haven't dropped our fluid level too low. If this feels okay, then we're going to go for a drive and see if we die again. All right. Brake feels real stiff. It barely goes to half of its travel. Feels good. Let's uh, let's close the hood up and go for a drive. See what happens. Sounds healthy, doesn't it? Hashtag engine mounts need to be replaced. All right. Well, I've driven it around for a little while and it feels okay. So uh, let's give it a shot. Give it just a second and. Wow, the brakes work so much better. Um, geez, still pulling to the uh, right a little bit, though I'm sure that's because that pad has had a little bit more wear in over the past few days, or I don't know. It might just still need a caliper on the other side, but uh, y'all give me a minute. I'm going to bring y'all right back. All right, well, it works, um, mostly. <laughs> the passenger wheel is still biting much harder than the driver's side. Not 100% sure what to say about that. It's possible the caliper is going bad. Maybe I could use to rinse the disc down with some brake clean. Um, who knows? The fact is, is that now it brakes a lot better than it ever has, um, and I feel safe driving it, relatively. <laughs> um, it's good enough for the girls I go out with? Oh, my wife wouldn't like that. It's um, good enough for me and my wife. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is a good case study for the whole concept of when something fails slowly over time, it's basically impossible to tell it's going wrong. Um, you know, in the probably three-ish years that this vehicle's been in possession between David and I, it's probably been failing the whole time and felt good enough, but now that it's the master cylinder is right, boy, was it very wrong before. Um, again, you know, coming from someone who's mechanically inclined, if you're not comfortable with what you've seen today, please don't attempt it unless you have a very safe place to test it where you won't kill yourself. Um, I, I am a professional doing professional things and anything you see me do crazy is just me. It's brakes. Please be safe. Anyways, I really appreciate y'all watching this video. Thanks for watching Murphy's Law Garage. As usual, we love you. God bless. Peace.